I want to introduce you all to my amazing, wonderful friends, Johnny Cork. So maybe this is your first time that you've been to a Young Life thing, which is awesome. But I hope that you've experienced something different. At the time, I had no idea what that was. I was like, what is it about this place? Why do I keep wanting to go back? At the time, I didn't know. Now, I know that it was because the leaders had a hope and a joy that is only found in Jesus. Now, I don't know how that hits you. I don't know if, if, if this is your first Young Life thing and you're like, yeah, I'm not really about this Jesus thing. Maybe you've never really heard about him or talked about him before. Maybe this is your first time ever thinking about him. 
wherever you're at, this is what I love about Yahweh, that we just ask that you come as you are. Just come as you are, wherever you are. If you're ready to dive in, if you're like, yeah, I'm all about Jesus, let's, let's go deeper, then great, we're going to do just that. But maybe you're kind of like, yeah, I don't, I'm not really about this whole Jesus thing, I just kind of like being here, then great. I hope, and I know, that I think if we dive in this weekend and look at the life of Jesus, it might just surprise you. It might just blow you away. Because myself and your young athletes believe that when we get to know the real Jesus, it's going to radically change your life. Yes, I know. And so, we're going to dive right in. I think the best place to learn and look at the life of Jesus is in the Bible. The Bible is this collection of books and letters, mostly about Jesus, but I believe it's also an entire story about a God chasing after you. This whole story, everything in here, is all about a God that wants to get to know you, have a relationship with you, and ultimately save you. And so in here, we get a look at the life of Jesus, the things that he did and things that he said. And so we're going to do just that. We're going to dive right in. So as it's recorded, Jesus is out and about. He's doing his Jesus thing. Mm. Mm. <laughs> yes. Thank you, Hunter Bar. He's doing his Jesus thing. And it says this, Jesus returned to Jerusalem for one of the Jewish holy days. Inside the city, near the Sheep Gate, was the pool of Bethsaida, with five covered porches. Crowds of sick people, blind, lame, or paralyzed, lay on the porches. So here's what happened. There's this big festival going on. Whenever a festival is going on, everybody would gather in the capital. And they would all go there. And Jesus is going there with his, with his crib, with his boys, right? He's with his, all his followers. He goes in, and by the sheep gate, literally this gate where the sheep would go in and out of, I know, crazy name. There is this massive pool, much like the pool we have at Kansas, a big pool. And all around it were these five covered porches, right? And under them would be people that would live there. This is where they would live. It said the blind, the sick, the paralyzed, the lame would all live at this pool. The story continues. It says, one of the men laying there had been sick for 38 years. When Jesus saw him and knew that he had been ill for a long time, he asked him, would you like to get well? I can't, sir, the sick man said, for I have no one to put me into the pool when the water bubbles up. Someone else always gets there ahead of me. These people believed that when the water would stir up, when the water would bubble without any wind, whoever was the first to jump in would be healed. With whatever they had going on, whatever sickness, whatever illness they had, whoever was the first to jump in would be healed. So this man had been laying there for 38 years, paralyzed, 38 years, trying to get into the pool. Somebody always jumps in ahead of him. And so Jesus goes over and kind of asks him this pretty weird question, right? Jesus asks him, do you want to get well? Kind of an interesting question to ask him, kind of like, duh, Jesus, like, that's why I'm here, you know? Of course. But Jesus asks him, do you want to get well? He says, I can't. Somebody always gets into the water before me. Jesus looks at him with compassion and says, stand up, pick up your mat, and walk. Instantly, the man was healed. He rolled up his sleeping mat and began walking. With just a few words, Jesus healed this man that couldn't walk for 38 years. With just a few words, just like that. He's healed. I love, there's a lot of things about this story that I love that tells us a lot about who Jesus really is. For one, Jesus wasn't afraid to get close to this man. He wasn't afraid to get right up and get close and get to know this man. It says that he went up to him and started a conversation with him. This is Jesus. He could have healed this guy from across the pool. He could have been like, boom, healed. And he would have been. He could have just thought it. But no, Jesus goes and gets to know him. He's not afraid to get close to his brokenness. He gets right up and close to him. And he asks him a question. He starts a conversation with him. He asks him, do you want to get well? And he offers him that new life, that healed 
Why? Do you want to get well? He learns about this man. And I think Jesus wants to learn about each and every one of us. Now, a lot of us probably haven't been paralyzed for 38 years. But I bet there's something in each and every one of us that could be different. Maybe we wished was healed. Maybe we wished just wasn't the way it's supposed to be. Maybe there's something in us that's like, man, this thing has been broken. I just wish that it could be fixed. I think if we're honest, we'll take a good look in, we'll see, yeah, there's something that I wish would be healed. Maybe it's not something physical. Maybe it's something internal. But so what, right? So what? So what, bald man? <laughs> so what if this guy named Jesus that lived a thousand years ago wants to get to know me, wants to, wants to start a relationship with me? So what? Because we here at Young Life, myself and your Young Life leaders, believe that Jesus is God. Jesus is God. That's what we believe. We believe he was so much more than just a man. How do we know this? Because he did things that only God can do. And not only that, he even said that he was. The story continues. This, this miracle happened on a Sabbath. A Sabbath was a day of rest. You weren't supposed to do anything on the Sabbath. You weren't supposed to walk. You weren't supposed to carry anything. I think Jesus knew this to set up exactly what was going to happen next. So he looks at this man and he tells him, hey, pick up your mat and start walking. At the time, there were these things called the religious police, the Pharisees. They would be out and about and they would make sure that nobody else worked during the Sabbath, during the rest day. So they see this man walking, carrying his mat. They completely ignore the fact that he just got healed, miraculously healed. They look at him and say, hey, you shouldn't be carrying that mat. You shouldn't be walking. Who told you to do that? Eventually, they track down, they figure out that it was Jesus that did. So the Pharisees, the religious police, they go to Jesus, and they say, why did you do that? Why are you telling people to work on the Sabbath, and why are you working on the Sabbath? Why are you healing people? What a ridiculous thing they're saying. Jesus responds with this. He says, my father is always working, and so am I. So the Jewish leaders try all the harder to find a way to kill him. For he not only broke the Sabbath, he called it God his Father, thereby making himself equal to God. So Jesus not only does things that only God can do, but he also called himself God. I love this. Jesus isn't afraid to ruffle up some feathers, right? <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> He's telling these religious police, hey, I... I am actually God. God is my Father. I am God's Son. Jesus is God. And we believe here at Young Life that that is exactly true, that Jesus is God, and that he was sent to save us. And not only that, but he was sent to come to know us, to have a relationship with us, and to save us. We believe that Jesus was God in human form. I know. It's a lot to kind of get your head around. But here's how I've best heard it described. I've best heard it described like this. Imagine this, that there's this big farm, and on this big farm there, there's a barn with a farmer. And all of a sudden, this storm starts rolling in. The clouds darken, thunder, lightning starts crashing in, rain and wind coming inside of this. And all of a sudden, the farmer inside of his barn starts hearing this thud on the outside of the barn. This boom, boom. He opens the barn door and he sees that birds are fleeing from the storm. But they can't see what's in front of them and they are hitting the side of the barn and dying. So the father thinks to the, bar, the farmer thinks to himself, man, if I could just make the barn visible. So he opens up the barn doors, he turns on every light in the barn, he starts waving his hands, hey, in here, in here, in here is safety. And yet, one after another, the birds, boom, 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 are hitting the side of the barn. They can't see the danger in front of them. And the farmer has this thought. And he says, man, if I could just become one of those birds, if I could just become one of those birds, I'd be able to communicate with them 
and warn them about the danger right in front of them. And friends, that's exactly what God did in his son, Jesus. God sent his son in the form of a man to chase after us, to get to know us, to have a relationship with us, and ultimately to save us. You may be like, save us? Save us from what? I don't need saving. Well, maybe, friends, maybe that you and me, all of us in here, maybe we need saving. Could it be possible that we all need to be saved from something? We're going to talk about that more tomorrow. I can't wait to hang out with you guys all weekend. We're going to have a couple of these things called club. But right now, you get the gift of cabin time. Cabin time. Cabin time is this amazing thing that you're going to get the chance to do where you go back into your cabins. You're going to go back to your cabins. And you're going to get a chance to talk about what we just talked about. Your leaders, hold on guys, one sec. Your leaders have some questions that they're going to ask you. Here's some rules. Some quick rules of cabin time, if I may. Rule number one, respect each other. Rule number two, be honest. We're not looking for perfect answers in cabin time. We just want to know where you're at. Don't filter it. Be your full, unfiltered self. Be real, be honest, be respectful. You're all going to go back, you're going to sit on the same floor on the ground, eye to eye, not up in your bunks, falling asleep, and you're just going to reflect and think about what we just talked about today. Can I pray for y'all, and then we'll go? All right, let's pray. Jesus, thank you for my friends here today. Thank you so much for this awesome place. Thank you for each and every one of them. Thank you that you sent your